What is up guys, welcome back to O'Neill Code. Today we're going to be going over the coin change problem in a recursive solution. I gave you guys a dynamic solution previously, so this time we're just doing a different way of thinking. So here's the question. You are giving coins of different denominations and a total amount of money. Write a function to compute the number of combinations and make up that amount. So in this example, we're giving the coins 1 and 2 and the amount 4. So we just need to come up with the different combinations of 1 and 2 that make the amount 4. So how are we going to do this? Well, we have this method right here named combo that returns an int, which is going to be the total amount of combinations, and then we're passing in the amount, which is 4, and we're doing that right here. Now how are we going to solve that recursively? Well, let's just think about it in our head. So if we're trying to find a combination of 4, what would we do? We would do 4 minus 2, for instance, and then again minus 2, and that gives us 0. Now we know 2 plus 2 equals 4, but since we did it backwards, we got 0 to validate that it was a combination. We could also do 4 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 to get us to 0. And once we get to 0, we know we can stop because that's how we validate it. Now that sounds like a base case to me recursively. So we can do this. If amount equals 0, we can just return 1. Now we're going to return 1 because that makes one combination. Now what happens if we over subtract? What happens if we subtract 1 5 times? We'll get negative 5, so it means we'll go over 1 time. So that means we have to return 0. Since we want to stop because we got past 4 and we know it's not a combination. So that we could do this. Amount is less than 0 we can return 0. So that means we're going to return no combination. We're past what we need it to be, so we stop the recursion, and we return 0 because we didn't actually get a combination. Now the last thing we need to look at is what happens if we're above 0. We need to keep subtracting, right? So if we subtract 2 one time, we're going to have 2 left over, and we need to subtract again. Well, how are we going to do that? So this is where the recursion comes in. So what if we do combo like this? You might think you do amount minus coins zero. So what would happen here? You would take the amount each time it's passed in and you would subtract one since that's the coins in the zero spot. But how will we get two? Well, what if we iterate through it? We can do four int i Let's call it coin to make it easier. i equals 0. We do coin is less than coins.length, since coins is the array that holds the coins. And then we can just do coin plus plus, like that. I'll put this right in there. So now we can just put i here. So each time it comes in, or not i, coin, sorry. So now each time it comes in, it's going to iterate through the coins array to the different coins. And now when this returns, it's going to return a 1. And we want to get the total amount of combinations, so we want to get all of them added together. So what if we do this? We create an int, name it n combos for the number of combinations, and we can start it off at 0. Then we can do n combos plus equals to whatever's coming out. So if it's a 1 or a 0, it's just going to keep adding to what n commas already is. Then finally, we just want to turn n combos, because that would be the final amount of combinations. So let's do this. What happens if we run this? We're going to get 5. Now is that right? Let's look at this. So what are the combinations of 1 and 2 that create 4? We can do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That comes to 4, so that's one combination. We can do 1 plus 1 plus 2, that gives us 4. And we can also do 2 plus 2. So those are three combinations, but why are we getting 5? Let's write this out and see what happens when we actually go through the recursion. So now to the left is the code that we just wrote, and let's see why we're not getting the right combination amount. 
So in the combo, we're going to have 4. So we're going to iterate through this with 4, and we're going to go like this. We're going to check if 4 is equal to 0, which it's not. 4 is not less than 0. So we're going to come down here to this 4 statement. So coin is going to be equal to 0. Now we're going to do amount, which is 4, minus coins array, the 0th position. And if you remember, the 0th position is 1. So we're just going to do 4 minus 1 and return that into combo. So you know that's going to be 3. We're going to do 4 minus 1 equal to 3. And we're going to pass the 3 into it now. And we're going to go through the same thing. 3 is not equal to 0. It's not less than 0. But we're going to start with the coin in the 0th position for 3 and do 3 minus 1 equals 2. Same thing with 2. Same thing with 1. But now when we pass in 0 to the combo, we're going to get over here, we're going to return a 1. So we know that that's a combination. It's going to be the 1, 1, 1 combination. 1, 1, 1, 1. So once we do that, we come here and we go back up into the 4. So we did the 0th position and we're going to iterate up to the 1th position in coins. So we're going to do the amount minus 2 now. And the amount is 1. So we're going to do 1 minus 2 which equals negative 1. And that's not a combination and we're going to return a 0. And this will bump us back up in the 4 with the amount 2 right over here. But instead of subtracting 1 this time, we're going to subtract 2. So we're going to do 2 minus 2 equals 0. And this is a combination. It's the 1, 1, 2 combination. 1, 1, 2. So now that we have that, we can go here and we're done with the 2 and we're going to move back up to the 3. So since we already did 3 minus 1, we're going to do 3 minus 2, which gives us 1. And now we're going to have to come back in here and return 1 as the combo array. And since 1 is new, we're going to iterate through it all over again. We're going to do 1 minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to get a combination here. It's going to be 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 1. 2, 1. So now this is the same combination but in a different order. And we do not want that. And we're going to have to figure out what's going on and making that happen right now. So anyway, since we just got that combination, we're going to do 1 minus 2, which equals negative 1. And that's not going to work. So this is going to bump us out of the 3, back up to the top 4. And since we already did 4 minus 1, we're going to do 4 minus 2 equals 2. We're going to cross that out. And we're going to do now 2 minus 1 equals 1. 1 minus 1 equals 0. So now we have the 2, 1, 1 combination. 2, 1, 1. So it's the same thing again, just a different order. So let's we'll figure that out. Now we're going to do 1 minus 2 equals negative 1. That's below 0, so not a combination. And then lastly, since we just did minus 1 with the 2, we're going to do 2 minus 2, which equals 0 again. So now we have 2 and 2. So this looks like it's going to be our 5 combinations here. But why are we getting 5 instead of 3? Because these three right here are all the same, but in different orders. So these are the permutations, not the combinations. So we have 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 2, and 2, 2. Those are what we want, but how do we get them? So here's the code again, and we need to figure out why we're getting 5 instead of 3. Well, after going through that whole recursion, it seems like we're getting the same combination three times, and we're not keeping track of the coin we're on, and we're just restarting. So we need to keep track of the coin we're hitting each time we go through this combination. So that means we need to pass in another int which is going to hold the current the current coin and then here we're going to also put in coin as a current coin 
up here, we can just start it off at zero since we're gonna be in the zeroth position. And here, instead of starting at zero, we're gonna start each time in the current coin. So if we run this, hopefully we get three. So it's, now that we're keeping track of the current coin, let's step through it and see how that makes the difference. So to the left, we have the new code where we're keeping track of the current coin. Now let's see how this actually works. So when we first do this, we're going to do combo four, zero. Four being the amount and zero being the current position. So when we go through this, we're gonna do four, the amount four is not equal to zero, it's not less than zero, we're gonna come down here. The current coin is zero, so we're in the, the coins array in the zeroth position and subtract that from four. So it's again just gonna be four minus one equals three, and then we're gonna pass in zero again because that's the current coin. Now we're gonna come down here and do the same with three. It's gonna be the current coin of zero, two, current coin zero, one, that's a combination with the current coin zero. So the combination of one, 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 one. All right, so now that we've done one and we've got that combination, we can cross it out and now we're gonna hit it with the two. So we're gonna do one minus two equals negative one. And since we did the two here, we're in the one position in the coins array. So that doesn't work out. Now we're gonna bump back up to the two we're gonna do two minus two equals zero, and that's the one position since we did the two. So now we get the combination of one, one, two. So now we're gonna cross that out. So now we're back up to the three. Since we already did three with the one, now we're gonna do three with the two. Three minus two equals one with the one position. So now when we come down here, we're gonna do one minus two equals negative one in the one. So this is where the big difference is. Before, we weren't keeping track of the current coin. We would have done one minus one, which equals zero, and we would have gotten another combination, which matches the one we just got. Since we're keeping track of the current coin, we're going right to two, and we're not gonna get that combination. So this, since this is negative one, we're gonna cancel out of that, and since this doesn't work, cancel out of that. Now we're all the way back up to four. So we're gonna do four minus two equals two with the one position. So now we're gonna do two minus two equals zero, and that's a combination, two and two. So here again, we would have failed because we would have done two minus one equals one, then one minus one, and we would have got multiple combinations again. Since we have this current position of one, we skip that and go right into the two. So there we go, we have three combinations here, and that's exactly what we want. We only have the one, one, two, instead of the different combinations. So this current coin held back the different ways of going into it, and that's how we finally got it. So that's how you solve the coin change problem with a recursive solution. Now I hope that you guys liked the new way I did the video. I did it more of a whiteboard style than the old way. So if you did, please let me know. If you didn't like it, please let me know so I can get some feedback and work on it. I did it all live so it may be harder to understand but hopefully in the future I can get a little better at that. So if you liked it, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and peace out.